That's the um, that's the sign. Oh, it is. Sorry. Okay, uh, we'll bring the meeting to order, and we'll start with the roll call. Cindy Pico, school member. Nancy Knight, member. Terry Waite, member. Wendy Ross, Gaber, member. Bill Larson, ex officio. Okay, we do have a quorum. So we'll be all set here. We'll start with the uh, review and acceptance of uh, last month's meeting minutes.
things um, in the paragraph for this town core group, and perhaps I didn't explain it very well when we're talking about the numbers. Um, but line starting in 136, the discussion followed um, in 137, assumed that utilities under the present sidewalk would need to be moved, and as a result, the cost would be better estimated at 300000 for option B. The 300000 was actually including the signage. We don't know anything about the utilities under there and what potential in impact that could have on the cost. Um, so the, the 300000 is, is a correct number as an estimate including the signs, but not addressing the utilities. If that makes it more clear. And then um, line 142, it's um, 10 feet, not 10 inches. <laughs> really wide sidewalk. <laughs> so from listening to what you just said, the, the, it's actually in, when we go to 137 there, yeah. I think the mm -hmm. discussion followed concerning the plans and Wendy added that it was assumed that utilities under the present sidewalk across would need to be moved. Just saying, do you assume otherwise? No, we assume they would need to be removed. We just don't know what is entailed with that. We have no idea of cost or exactly oh. where the utilities are. Mm -hmm. These are just in reference. Jim Mayhew, <coughs> excuse me, had indicated when we were meeting that there are utilities. Well, then under I think there. I think we ought to make a statement that 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 clearly identifies that we believe there are utilities to be moved, but no estimate was made of the exactly. cost of doing that. Right. Or included know. in the estimate. But the 300,000 number that was included includes a contingency that right. hopefully will address the utilities. It's not, we didn't leave them oh, okay. 100% to be, to be added to the price of the project. Otherwise, if that's the case, if I've misunderstood that, then we should have a different number. Yeah, so right. I oh, mean, I, if, we, uh, if we're assuming utilities have to be moved, we ought to be including some yeah, money to make it happen. Just raise the money after tax. Right, otherwise, what are you going to do? You're going right. to you're gonna start and get stopped? That's right. We, we would stop. No, I know. That, that was the whole crux of the problem. Why I was concerned that we were looking at both sides, because we don't know. Jim Mayhew had brought it up that he thought that they were there at a certain depth, but wasn't sure what I'll, that depth I'll was. Talk to, I'll talk to Jim right. about okay. that. Because the 300,000, I thought, was our, including our estimate for right. the actual signage, oh, right. not I agree utility work. I right. agree that it includes the signage as well. Oh, it does. Absolutely. Yeah. That, that is, but I thought there was a large enough contingency in there that we oh. could address the utility issue. Right, yeah, I guess that's I'll, probably I'll what I know. I'll have to talk to Jim about that. And yeah. Just say we need to evaluate the budget um, to make sure that we have we're requesting enough to do the project. And that needs to be part of the discussion later in the meeting. Yeah. So. Anybody need any further time to review the minutes? Not going to have a motion to accept the minutes. I'll make a amended. motion to accept the minutes as, a, as amended. As amended. Okay. All, <laughs> all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, the uh, minutes have been accepted as amended. And it's kind of an open amendment because we'll have to find out what that number is going to be or how it's uh, applied. Okay, uh, we have a public hearing with regard to the proposed zoning amendments for uh, 2018 town meeting. Um, I'd like to open the public hearing now. Mark, do you have, are you going to present anything or something to no, the... I, I, we have Is, to do we have any public? Well, we do not have any public, <laughs> but we have noticed the, the uh, hearing and we put it in the newspaper and put it on the website and posted it at the... I'm prepared to discuss it, but in light of the fact there's nobody here. Um, <laughs> well, the discussion would, be t would take place during the public hearing anyway, so in case somebody walks in. Tara's had a chance to look at it. Yeah, I have a few minor things. Sure. Sure. Um, and I 
Could we say that no sign attached to a building will be higher than the drip edge of the roof to which it is attached? No, because that could be on it. Yeah, really. Yeah. Okay. Would you mean Beca the, the because you get variation in roof heights? You know, uh, we're you know our, our zoning actually allows that. You know, so we say the maximum height is so many feet. But you're allowed some variation, you know, um, you know, as long as it's less than 10% yeah. of the thing. I, I, my, you know, I don't know what the... How about a word like the main drip edge or the or primary drip edge? The drip, drip edge, edge of the main roof. Right. That, 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 like that. That's not going to solve all your issues because you, you're going to have some places where you're going to say, what's the main roof? But I yeah. think it'll solve 90% of the... Yeah, yeah, that gives issues. the intent of what you're trying to do. Right. Okay. So we'll add drip edge of the main um, roof. Of the main roof. I don't think I've ever seen a sign on a cupola. No, I was, it, but it meant if, if the cupola had a roof with a drip edge, uh, right, then the sign right. could be on the main roof next to it. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, on G A. The last sentence, I, I think you mean once a sign is displayed for 28 days, it must be on you. You're not allowing it to be more than days. Where are we now? 6A. Six, 6A. Six A. Six A. The okay. last sentence of it. Okay. You say once a sign is displayed for more than 28 days, but you don't allow it for more than 28 days. Right. So I think you meant to say once a sign is displayed for 28 days. Yeah. 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 Four. Yeah. Yeah. Twenty-eight days. Just cross out more than. Yep. Yep. Okay. Um, the next one, B. Same one, six. It's, yeah. There's just a typo in the first sentence. It's nice for B. Eight. Yeah. And then. What? Eight. Nine. Eight. It's got four. And then they should be constructed of materials that will last at least fourteen days. Not up to. Okay. Say it again. I'm sorry, Kara. They should be constructed of materials that will last at least 14 days, is what, what you're trying to go with that. Right, you, right. Yeah, as opposed to up to. Okay. Because that's kind of the same as saying less than, right? Okay. Yeah. Up yeah. To. yeah. Okay. Um, in C, below that, just a typo temporary signs must Letter. be professionally yeah. lettered. On the next page, um, I looked in the zoning, um, the ordinance itself, and I didn't see a definition for site. When you say one sign for site for single family homes, what what number are you on? Just the first row, single family and two family homes. You say one sign per site. Is is there going to be any disagreement about what a site is? Hmm. Could it like? I don't, I'm not sure that I know if you mean like a cluster home, this is all one element, or each dwelling. I don't, I don't know when you're going with site. Well, I think they, they mean lot 
like a building yeah, site. it's building site. It's I don't know if that'll clarify it, but it so be. this is completed, and we have people that have combined multiple lots and built a single house on them. We tend to refer to that as a site. You know, and the intent would be you get one sign per home that's on a site. You know, it's not per lot. You know, um, if we said that one sign per building lot, then you could technically get two signs. I don't, I, I, well, I don't know. That, um, Let's, how about we look at the definition of a building yeah, lot? You need something that's defined as a building yeah. What about dwelling? Do, do you mean dwelling? Yeah, well, yeah. that's, yes, it's one sign per, well, I, I don't well, know how do to write, you, well, you, you know, dwelling. Single detached principal building. Uh, Multi-family dwelling is a detached principal building containing townhouses, condominiums. Um, so, A plot of land, generally a subdivision of a city, town, or village block, or some other distinct tract, represented and identified by a recorded plot or deed. That's a lot. So we really ought to change one sign per lot. Then we have a defined area. Right. Okay. So well, per that, lot. Doesn't that? I thought you raised a good point. Well, well most, most, yeah, but most people come in and do a minor lot line adjustment because they don't want to pay the taxes on two lots, yeah. so they combine them so into one lot, lot and get yeah. a preferential rate. Uh, I'm not aware of anybody who has not taken, who has built across multiple lots There's only one. and has not combined them. There's only one. There's one. Out, out by you. There was Tony? Tony. There's one on your agenda last time. So let's just say one sign per lot, yeah. and then it's no confusion. I'm just trying to kind of foresee yeah. areas that yeah. might cause confusion, and confusion cost money down the road, so um, you don't want that. That's a good thing. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good thing. And then I, I you know, the other thing, um, well, the bottom of the table on page four is the, the type of one sign per, per road after the spikes that add. The residential? Yeah, the last row on the table. Yep. Where it ends on page four. It says one oh. signs per road access. Right. Oh, just gotcha. Yeah. Um, then, I, then I just had a question to make sure that this was deliberate. Um, 9B at the bottom of that page. Um, I just wanted to check that you only wanted 5C and D to apply not 5 A and B about maintenance and lighting. Well, I mean, we could expand it to that. Maintenance, I don't think, is an issue. They're temporary. So after 14 days, they're, you know, 28 days at a max, they've got to be taken off anyway, right? No, we're right? talking about permanent or temporary or directional signs. Oh, directional why the signs. temporary? Yeah. There, I don't... I would think that directional signs you'd want the same maintenance and lighting yeah. to a, rules to apply. Yeah. So I wasn't sure why. Yeah, you, we. Why uh, uh, there's no harm in extending them to, to all four, right? To yeah. section yeah. five. Yeah. Section five. Yeah. Right. So just sit, strike the S on sections. Right. And leave it at section five. Above. Right. Above. Above. And then kind of on the very last thing on page five, um, similar question, I just want to make sure that you meant to only apply 5D to temporary directional signs. What number? Oh, okay, J. 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 J, okay. Just want to make sure that was deliberate too. <coughs> well, and I, I would say, again say, it, I think it is intended to, to this section five. But the question is, is it redundant? Well, you're, 
you're saying five D implies I can have these prohibited lighting or sign features in B and C. I mean, like why why are you only saying D? Yeah, because if you <coughs> say just D, then they can have an animated sign potentially under J. Well, and D well. is for permanent signs. Yeah. But you're saying temporary signs have to meet those criteria. So you're saying oh, right. that right. you can have an right. animated sign or a lighted sign right. which are prohibited under B and C, okay. 5 yeah. B and C, but you can have those for temporary signs. Right. Is what you're saying, Jay? If we don't, if we don't just I would read it that way, yeah. I would say, oh, well then I can have right. blinking lights to right. point to my event. Yeah. Right. Blinking arrow. Right. <coughs> because it's temporary. Yeah. I would think that your reasoning was, well, since it's temporary, I can have the flashing arrow. Would that change require That's another? starting to get a little bit, I mean. I, I think it's a clarification. I mean, if it, you, in your what? mind, that was implied anyway. Yeah. I just think it's a clarification. I, I'm, I'm just wondering whether if you take a look at the change we made to B, and then look at J, why we need the first couple sentences anyway. I think we ought to say that, you know, what I'm wondering if, if, you know, temporary directional signs are permitted but must perform to the general requirements for temporary signs in section five. But permanent or temporary, it's in, in the other one it says permanent or temporary directional signs could conform to the general requirements for on private property section five. It's, to me, it's just saying the same thing, right? Yeah. Well, I think J and B. And what, what the only thing that I'm interested in, in actually in J, is there is a limit, and this, is, and, and this may be confusing, there is a limit of three di temporary directional signs per permit request. And that's intended to get around somebody wanting to put up 15 different signs in a row, you know, the events here, the events here, yeah. you know, so that you're limited to three. But, uh, but you know, that's the intent. I don't know whether it's very clearly worded that way, but. So, I mean, it, it, if you could just end it after permitted, right, then that sentence, because it, as you said, you already said that in D. Right. Yeah. We are. Yeah. So we could strike, but must just conform. Temporary directional signs are permitted. Period. If possible, signs should be and on. Right. So that is, it's so it's strike something we're done it. It adds confusion. So in the first sentence, we're striking the words "but" to above. Yep. Right. But we're keeping "if possible." Yes. Okay. Because I think that was the main point here. <coughs> okay. I'm just kind of looking through this and I don't know. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm trying to look at it from the standpoint of somebody sitting out there wanting to put a sign up and has looked at the regulations the way we've had them posted. And then does that make a significant difference to that person? From our point of view, no. I think if you strike the letter D out of the first sentence, you can make an argument that that you did not substantially change it. Yeah, and look. If you start. Oh, 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 oh! What do you mean? Did we ch really change the intent? Right. Yeah. All right. You know, we've we've got. We can hold another public hearing. I mean, if you want to. I mean. Well, I just went through what the difference was, and um, I think it's covered anyway. To be honest with you, I think even if you said D, I mean, 
even if, like say you didn't make that sentence that said it has to comply. It would have to comply anyway. Right. Mm -hmm. So this, it's almost a, a redundant statement, but I can see why you need it. Um, but if all the other rules apply anyway, just to state that now we're saying all the other rules apply, I don't think is a problem. So I would say as far as, far as uh, 9B, probably that would not be an issue. Right. Um, the other one is 9J. Mm -hmm. Right. I, I don't think that change is, is particularly material. Uh, 9B is a more significant change than, than the leading that must conform to the general requirements. That's just the redundancy. I mean, 9B, we're, we're now saying A and B apply as well as C and, C and D. Right. If, if you you could argue that I, you know that that's a material change. If you, the way that the correct way to change J, when you're referencing the wrong section right now, you say you must conform to the general requirements for temporary signs in section five. Section five is permanent signs. Right. 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 And, right. And, and right. It's in, that's why I'm, I think we should take that statement out. As you suggested, just our permitted period, yeah. and if possible, the sign should be added to existing sign, temporary signs, and limited to nine square feet. There is a limit of three temporary directional signs per permit request. Yeah. Because right now it's just wrong. It's kind of wrong. Right. right. Yeah, I that agree. Actually, that actually loosens the requirement anyway, so that probably wouldn't be an issue. But I'm going to make a suggestion anyway. Um, it would be, I think, helpful since we can vote on these at the next meeting, that we don't vote on these now, okay. that we read them one more yeah. time okay. and proofread them, make sure there aren't any other things like that, and then vote on them at the next meeting. Mm. Can we make changes at the next meeting? Sure. No. Not Not totally. no, you editorial. Can you can make, can make editorial. editorial, but you cannot make substantive in February. Does that create any problem for you, Mark? Well, unless well, you extend the public hearing, right? No, if you keep no, the public hearing open. No, because you're, we're doing the warrant. Yeah. Um, oh, okay. Need the, yeah, the all right, good point. Yeah, yeah I hear you. Um, the only thing you can do is you can make the warrant public hearing. Yeah. 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 Renoticing and because if we're in agreement that we're not making substantive changes, right? well, <coughs> this this public hearing was noticed. This was yeah. <coughs> so if we make changes with regard to this public hearing and don't close the public hearing, then it could be continued the next month without a notice, don't right? You mean in well, January? <coughs> oh, it's December. I'm thinking. Yes, we will. Like you have time to vote on it. In so January. we'll have time to vote on it in June. Can you? Okay. Okay. And, right. And I'll talk to town council about these changes. And if he wants us to re-notice them, it's easy to just put it in the paper. Okay. It's just the cost. I don't see how they'd have to be re-noticed if this this meeting was was, was public. If the town council doesn't agree that they're not substantive, yeah. Then if then they're you substantive, you're supposed to re-notice. Then you, because you need to post the changes right. to make substantive changes. Right. Nobody, that's nobody that's showed you know, up for this meeting. How yeah. would they know to show up for the next? Well, yeah, meeting? but I guess that's my point. You know, and that's what I'm gonna ask you yeah. is: there's no reason to re-notice it, and so we will not re-notice it unless he says we need to. That's all. Okay. That will be the only way we'll re-notice. It. So we need to make a motion to continue the public continue hearing till January. That's that's your intent. <laughs> I'll make a motion to continue the public hearing until January. Well, the public hearing is not closed, right? It's just not closed. closed. It's continued. So I, I make that motion ahead of time? Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay, make I'll make a motion then to continue the public hearing until January. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, so the public okay. hearing is continued. Um, is that all the issues that you yeah. had, Tara? And, Thank you and very much you'll make that. these changes and redistribute another yeah. set, yeah. and right. I think we ought to, ought to read them one more time. And you'll, and you'll post it. Um, and that was 
We're gonna we're gonna make changes. We're gonna notify Rich as the town clerk. Down, down we made yeah. changes in See, that's the only change I've made. And then we'll check with town council as to whether or not they want us to post a new public hearing or if they'll just take the vote you just made uh, to continue the public hearing and then you'll vote one way or the other in January to move the changes forward. Right. Um, just another clarification thing and where we've been talking about. Um, we talk about 9B. Permanent or temporary directional signs should conform to general requirements for signs on private property, Section 5. But Section 5 isn't private property. It's, it's just permanent signs, right. So should we strike the private property while we're at it? Uh, do you mean 4 or do you mean, mean 5? Well, it's referring to Section 5. 9B refers to Section 5 signs on private property. It works for me because it's 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 saying you know that section five is about private property, but we want them to apply to directional signs on public property anyway. But five isn't about private property. Four is. Four. Five is all permanent. Well, most of them are, signs. but five is all permanent signs. Whether all it's permanent signs. Right. So I'm just saying while we're striking stuff that could be confusing, isn't the private property kind of confusing too? Uh, in 9B. So it's unnecessary. So instead of on no, private property, that's that that just section five. Can I just ask another question? I mean, on that one, you, the heading is um, um, under that is permanent or temporary, and temporary is six. Right. right, I understand, but that's why I, rather than rewriting the same, you know, doubling the text, we, I, I said, wouldn't it, we just refer back to the rules in five also apply to temporary. Okay. Otherwise, you've got to repeat all the text, which you could do, you know? I mean, you could write it all over again, but then it's exactly okay. the same stuff. So is the intent that conform to the general requirements for permanent signs in Section 5 above? Is that the intent of that sentence? That's how I was reading That's how I read it. Yeah. yeah. So, so why don't we just make that change? Just take so Okay, but I, I think Wendy's saying strike private property. Well, 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 yes, I'm saying that too. I'm yeah. saying Disagreeing. So it to the permanent. general requirements for permanent signs Period. in Section 5 above. Okay. So we're striking private? Yeah. Yes, on private property. All right. Is, uh, okay. Section five of yeah. Okay. <coughs> okay. Um, actually, I just got a mm -hmm. typo. Uh, in section five D, is it David? Uh, two or I I. <laughs> um, 12 by 24 feet, and the maximum height of a standalone sign is 25 feet. Yeah, that's right. right. You're right. Yeah, right. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I just read it. <laughs> you know, you read it quickly, yeah. it doesn't sink in. Yeah, I read it last night, and I just didn't even see this. <laughs> or for those of you who have been working on it, and I've read it eight times, you don't see it anymore. <laughs> really redundant, but I just want to make sure that we've captured all of the changes. Can I just quickly review them mm -hmm. that I have here? Good, so we'll all be on the same yeah. page. Yes. yes. Is there anything on page one that changed? Did I miss anything? No. Okay. So page two, mm -hmm. paragraph B, subparagraph II, 25 feet instead of 25 foot and no sign attached to a building will be higher than the drip edge of the main roof. And then it's the, also the 12, 12, by 24 20, 12 by 24 feet. Feet, yes. Right. Yep, sorry. So there's three changes there. Yeah. Okay. Then in 6C, yeah. 
temporary signs must be professionally lettered? Any other? No, yeah, there are two a, others. A and B. A and B. But on A, we yeah. struck out more, more than. than. Right. More than before the 28 days. Yes. yes. Okay. For 28 days. And yeah. on B, there were two square feet and then um, constructive materials that will last at least. At least 14 days. Instead of like this. Yeah. <coughs> First line of the chair of the uh, table there on page oh, three. Yeah. One sign per lot. Mm -hmm. Anything else on that page? Page four. Last line of the table, third box over, one sign per road. Yep, the only right. has in paragraph 9B says, um, should conform to the general requirements for permanent signs in section five above. Okay. So anything else on page four? Nope. Page five, J, uh, temporary directional signs are permitted, period. Right. Permitted, not permitted. permitted. Sorry. <laughs> right. Permitted to be permitted. Yes. Right. <laughs> you got it. All right. Yeah. Good. All right. Okay. So well, well, yeah, well, but, right, period, right. So period. then yeah. you're going to take the rest well, of that sentence. Got, the yeah. rest of that sentence is gone, and then right. we're keeping the other sentence. Right. You got it. Right. right. Oh, okay. Okay. But to above. Okay. 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 Boy. Uh, we should hold public hearings around Christmas. I mean, the last time we had <laughs> signs, we had 30 people here, right? I guess they've given up. Okay, so will the public meeting will be continued until <coughs> our next meeting. Um, we'll move on to the next item, which is uh, old business. There's nothing on the agenda. I don't know if anybody has anything they want to bring up. How are we doing for alternates? <laughs> okay. They haven't heard from anybody, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Did you put out a letter or anything? No, but we have been talking with folks as they're coming okay. in there. We have taken some. Okay. Good. So if anybody knows anybody who has some interest. Please mention it to them. And in about a week and a half, we'll start the open period for election uh, signups. So we can put on the website that, in addition to those positions, that we have volunteer positions that are open. The next period of time is going to be in January. Okay. This 10 day window. Okay. Um, I guess under old business, I would just like to mention that uh, I wasn't present at the last meeting, but I did uh, read the minutes and found that somebody had suggested uh, rumble strips as a speed reducer out here as a part of the entrance to the town. I, I strongly recommend you don't go with rumble strips. No, we did that before. They're, oh, no, they're yeah. extremely noisy. And uh, anybody that's above the valley floor can hear traffic coming up all oh, the way. I, I never heard it. it. Really, the sound does rise. Oh, yeah. it's it's they're loud and they're very annoying. As a matter of fact, a lot of these areas along the highway where they put them uh, along the edge, they've had to fill them in because the noise just travels so far. Huh. So I would strongly suggest that you don't so do that. So you're talking about the ones that are graded <coughs> into the road. Right. I'm talking about the ones that are risen above that we used to have. Those are speed bumps. Yeah. Well, speed bumps. Yeah. All right. Okay, I just wanted to get that out there. So, all right. Um, committee reports? Town core group? Uh, the town core group hasn't met yet this month. Um, still working on making sure that everyone's on the same page with um, what we want to do with the improvements in the CIP. 
Uh, just update me a little bit on that. Um, the three plans that were presented at the last meeting. What, what's the status of that? What's going to be happening with that? Um, Mark, you would probably know better than I where we're at with that. With well, the it's plans. like we reviewed the CIP um, at the meeting yesterday and approved the 2018 project list that was moved forward by the planning board. So that's in our, right now, in our proposed budget uh, that we're working on. As part of the discussion, though, we did agree, right, Bill, that um, the selectmen and the town core working group getting together would be a good right. idea. Because yeah, so one of the things that, that, that uh, we talked about at the selectmen's meeting would be that it's going to be difficult to sell the proposal if we simply present it as a sign and these improvements to the sides of the roadway in terms of people need some sense of what the whole thing is going to look like. You know, uh, because this is just a step. And so the question becomes, what, where is the, tr the where, where, where is the vision for the, for the walking network and the trail network because I know now there are some visions to build a pavilion and some bathrooms over by the beach. So people, you know, so the feeling was that if we're going to sell this and just present it as a sign, there's a, you know, it's going to be difficult. You know, people aren't going to, well, I don't understand how that's going to make a big difference in the town. So uh, we want to talk to the town core group to see if they can't put together something that would present some overall vision of what this is going to look like. So not just looking at 2018, but, but all looking at the all the subsequent years as well. In the CIP. So because there, <coughs> we with the expanded CIP, we've got a lot of projects mm -hmm. in there that have not been in. So hopefully we can have that joint meeting in the next week and try to try to get N in the next week. I thought it was January fourth that we were shooting for. Oh, at the, that's right. We did change it right. last night to the right. next selections meeting, January fourth. What day is it? The Wednesday. It's a Wednesday. I'm not, I'm no, Wednesday. that one's a Thursday. No, it's a Thursday. It's a Thursday. Thursday because I'm okay. sorry. Yeah, okay. You're right. We're talking about the CIP committee. I think I think it'd be right. worthwhile to provide some feedback. We had a meeting yesterday with the well engineers as well. As well, yeah, right. <laughs> they 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 don't have very good news, oh. and um, it, it, what it is is nobody knows other than why the well is misbehaving, other than it really misbehaved in the last big rainstorm. I mean, the counts went off the chart apparently to them. It, it would, we would have been better off pumping water out of the sewage treatment plant. <laughs> oh, than, uh, well, the water out of the sewage treatment plant is very clean, the discharge. It's cleaner in some respects than the river, so be careful with that. So they don't know. They have some ideas of things we could do, but there's a placeholder in there for $400,000 to make repairs to that well system, and we're going to still ask for it, but because we don't want to delay doing it, but we don't have a specific, here's what we're going to do yet, you know? We, we, we're, we've just got money set aside to do something. Where is this third well that's behaving? The third badly? well is if, if you walk along the Mad River Trail. Yeah. It's the, if you start from. Going towards your house? No, if, you, if you're actually, it's, if you run across it, if you're walking from, uh, West Branch Road on yep. the Mad River Trail, you get this like a little island before you go over the stepping stone bridges. Yep, I know what you mean. It's sitting on that island in there. And huh. one of the problems right now is 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 we we allow complete access to the site. It's not fenced off the well or anything. Yep. So one of the steps they're recommending is, is we are going to fence that off. We're going to put a cap on top of it so that water... Uh, one of the fears is that animal wastes are actually coming down into the well at that point where the well site is. But 
Yeah, I remember knows. years ago, before that, there was a huge beaver dam right in that area at one point. But was there ever like uh, any type of, you know, colonial resident or whatever residents in that area or yeah. dumping no, or what, anything? What no. The, the the feeling is that ever since Irene, oh. that that triggered a change in the river. Uh, geo you know, uh, yeah. whatever you call it, yeah. I don't know, well, um, uh, flow that has ultimately led to some degradation of that particular well. Just thank God that well number two doesn't seem to be doing the same thing. But just so you know from where we are, from the CIP, we're going to ask for a lot of money without much idea of what we're going to spend it on. We're just keeping our fingers crossed. Is there a point at which you'd abandon that <coughs> well and do another one? That's a lot. It to, no? Yes. Well, I don't think we'd ever abandon the site. There, one of the options is to comp is to replace it with a modern well, to dig all the well out and replace it with an up, you know, with a new well, which is better sealed and everything else and less subject to ground, you know, to, to surface water contamination. They had a lot of time mm -hmm. finding a site for that fourth well. Well, right, they yeah. they drilled, what was it, 119 wells yeah. to get that wow. one. Wow. So really? in spite of the fact we call this Waterville Valley, there isn't a lot of water under the ground. Since yet. the 1960s. Between <laughs> wow. Between the Waterville Company and the town, we drilled over 190 test wow. wells. Wow. So we don't want to go looking for a new site because we're pretty convinced it's not in the valley floor. Right. Um, so we we're hoping that we can find a way to fix this well. Now, it's not a crisis. Between two and four, we have more water today than we did when we only had two and three. So, but we, we have no backup is the problem. There's no redundancy, which is the reason we drilled four to begin with. So we need to get three back online. Okay, uh, we'll go on to communications. Sharon, Carrie, do we have any communications? Okay, nothing in the tech the file. Unless, unless that's where you want to you know, talk about the zoning work for the coming year. Sure. Mm -hmm. okay. I think um, we wanted to touch base on whether your goals are the same as when we talked about it last. I think what started the, the big picture zoning conversation was your pedestrian village revitalization study and trying to look at the zoning to see if you can change parking, density, lighting to implement some of that plan. Um, and when we did the big kind of housekeeping cleanup of the zoning, there were some um, uses that we talked about. Either people didn't really remember why they were allowed or not allowed in certain districts, so we wanted to take a comprehensive look at that. And does that still sound like what should be on the table for the coming year? Yeah, it was my understanding that we were going to try to get a little more organized with regard to the review of the uh, ordinance and, and pick out particular such sec rather than review the whole thing, pick out particular sections such as parking Which and work on that. Uh, Parking, well, parking density, lighting, and uses were the categories that right. we had planned to focus on in the last year. And One I would like to add to it uh, is um, the, you know, the definition of what requires a, um, a site right. plan review and what doesn't. That's been very confusing. Mm -hmm. I think it's been difficult for not only the developers but the, the public as well as the, the board because I think it, the definition is rather... Cloudy. And it really gets into, I, I think we've agreed now that, that pretty much almost anything requires a site plan review other yeah. than a modification to a single family home. And our question is, is that, reason, you know, that seems to be heavy handed. Well, you can't require a site plan no. review for a single family home. No, or a no home. we exclude those, yeah. but everything else we require it pretty much. And um, even if it's just an alternate use of the property. Um, and, and we're saying, gee, is that 
getting kind of heavy-handed here mm-hmm. for a moment. Yeah, the thing is, it refers to development and improvement, and I, I think that, that that those are pretty flexible terms, and they're not well defined. I don't believe for the use in this uh, in the ordinance. So something. I mean, the the question got brought up. Well, what if you're going to be putting in a, a frisbee, right? Or a platter mm-hmm. golf course? You know, does that require um, a, a site review? And it, you know, the, one of the words used was improvement, and that's if you were going to improve the uh, increase the value of the property as a result of the the activity. Well, does it improve you increase the value? Probably because it gives you something else to do on that land. But does it really require a site review? It doesn't disturb very much. So something like that, is, uh, I think, is it's not a very big item, but it requires a lot of thought. Mm-hmm. And, uh, well, and we haven't been consistent in the way we've been doing it because <coughs> Town Square, if you look at Town Square today, just at the first floor of all of the buildings, they are... I can't think of a single space in there except for the office space that is the same as when that was approved. Every every space in there, the use has been changed, right? So they've gone from a retail store space to a restaurant space or whatever. In none of those instances have you required site plan review. No, but I think in most cases we did at least talk, was this an allowed use? No, they, they, no Bill, they, they have not come into the planning board no, I know. any of those changes. No, but I, I, uh, I think we do it by exception in the sense that we talk about it and if we felt it wasn't an allowed use, we notified them that they were violating the zoning. I mean, the only one that comes to mind is, is when Preston wanted to build this little water tower. <coughs> um, you know, and we said, well, you know, that there's not an allowed use to build that thing. But they would have just gone ahead and built it. The ski jump. Ski jump. I, I yeah, the ski jump. You know, okay, you're not no, trying I'm, to I'm talking about the internally actual Right, I hear you. I know, I know. But if you look at the definition of site plan review, the change of use of those, they have different parking requirements. They have different, right. um, you know, health and safety requirements. But we have not required site plan review in those cases. We just said, oh, it's town square. Mm-hmm. They can do whatever they want. But then, like you pointed out, on another site for the Frisbee Golf, we were talking about requiring them to come in for a site plan review for that. So there's no consistency in, it's just, you know, we we need to define it a lot better as to what we're going to require site plan review for. Yeah, particularly for your purposes, because you're the first one they go to. Yeah. And they say, do I need to get a right. permit for this, right? So. Well, sometimes, well, no. Sometimes they don't ask, right? Building permit or no, but Chris. changing the use and saying, you know, we're, we're putting in a restaurant. I, I was going to hop in here because yeah. that, that doesn't go in the zoning. No, it's site plan it's review. Right? Yeah. The, yeah. What we were talking about was what amendments you want to look at in the zoning for the coming year. Right. That was the project. And, um, the, ah, I hear you. the zoning or a separate town meeting or an article authorize the planning board to have site plan review regulations, but then those regulations are where you have exceptions and lay out the thresholds and, and that. And I'm I'm happy to work with you on that as well if that's what you're asking. But just to be clear, that's not part of the zoning amendment. Yeah, I think I understand that, but yes, I'd like to. I, in my personal opinion, I'd like you to take a look at that. And, and okay. I mean, you've had experience in a lot of different towns, how uh, they handle uh, it. Uh, yeah, I've written a number of sections. It's not a big section, it's just, it's the right. purpose. Basically, just, it's the purpose just of the Just trying to be clear what, what our scope was here. Yeah. Um, so, and I'm not, I mean, I never write an agreement that's narrow either. It's going to say to include, but not limited to be um, 
zoning topic. The, um, so the other thing, what we were trying to do last year, what people were tied up with other things in the summer, is to really have this work and have consensus and know where you're going and have time for public meetings. Um, you really need to plan <coughs> probably an hour and a half long discussion every month for about, say, four months whether that's a separate meeting date or when you're done with your other business, you take a break and then have a, a workshop type meeting. Um, but I'd say it's, it's four months of rolling up your sleeves for an hour and a half every month in order to be ready for for the public. And we, when we had talked about our strategy for that, we had said we should do it during our regular meetings, but do it first. Yeah, I think it would be a good idea to start out during the regular like meetings. That idea. There's <laughs> nothing <laughs> on the in the next few months that's yeah. outstanding as right. far as I, a lot of I'd issues. I'd rather have you fresh <laughs> yeah. Yeah. than wanting to be done. And we may change free. that as time goes yeah. on if we get over a, a burden with Then, then the other question things. is just when do you want to start? I don't have a lot of conflicts to my time at 8 in the morning. <laughs> well, I, I don't have any problem starting it in January, but... Great. Well, we finished. We we need to finish the zoning amendments for eighteen. Because what we're talking about right now are zoning amendments for nineteen. The, the only zoning amendments, amendments we have right now are the ones are with the signs. signs. Right. right. That's right. I'd, I'd rather focus on get those so that we're settled on those, and then. I think it's a good point. So start in February. 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 Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to make one other note of something that as you go through this and read it. Um, we have a, a fair amount in the zoning talks about trailers and whether they can or can't be used. It, it talks to trailers in the sense that they're boat trailers and they're home trailers. The question is, what do we do with storage trailers? We just approved the storage trailer. And the zoning is absolutely silent. And I'm not sure those rules apply to storage trailers. And, and I'm not even sure you call it a storage trailer. It's a storage well, box. Well, it's not really on wheels. Well, yeah, it's a box. Yeah. <laughs> but the question is, does it meet? I don't know whether it met the definition of a, of a you know, it ha quote, has to have a roof. Well, it's got a roof. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so we're a little weak in that area. And I'm not even sure what we want, you know. I saw the way that that one gets set. But anyway, so just make a note. Uses, yeah, when you get to that yeah, section, yeah. we'll we need to address that. It is a. Well, we'll look at it, see if it meets what you were envisioning. I would like to see a level and closer to the building, as opposed to right up to close to the type of building. But temporary, perhaps. It's green. Have okay. Have you heard any complaints, Mark, nope. since it was put in? No, they I haven't been up yet, probably. Not unless, uh, not unless they've been at uh, the Coyote on Thursday. <laughs> coyote has <hasn't. laughs> He's the only one that's been there. <laughs> we were the only one there last yeah. Thursday. Yeah. yeah. Good special treatment that was good. So I'm waiting. So I'm waiting. So <laughs> and pick the oysters. <laughs> Any other vetoes you need from the board in order for us to do a contract? No, I, I think we're talking the four months starting in February, and uh, mm -hmm. we're going to take those three topics that she had. Yep. The uses would be very helpful to us. Parking density, lighting, and uses, and we'll have the site right. plan for the city. Yep. So maybe add maybe thing five, because yeah. I can see the site plan being a oh, yeah, detailed discussion. Yep. Okay. Thank you, Tara. Thank you. Looking forward to getting Thank holiday you to it. Yeah. yeah. We'll adjourn. <laughs> All right. Can we? I'll make a motion to adjourn. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? <laughs> Mark 11 o'clock, right? I'll, I think I'll head on home. Yeah. I, I